The Premier has stared down a threat by the Nationals to abandon the coalition over a policy aimed at protecting koala habitats. Gladys Berejiklian gave her deputy, the Nationals leader John Barillaro, until 9 o'clock this morning to back down or face expulsion from Cabinet. He did, but he's now claiming that as a victory. Some Liberals are openly saying he needs to go. State political reporter Ashley Raper joins us now from State Parliament. Ashley, it's been an extraordinary 24 hours, hasn't it? It certainly has, Jeremy. Voters can be forgiven for wondering how a policy on protecting koalas could almost tear the coalition apart. But the coalition partnership has been saved today, and that's all down to the Premier. When faced with a revolt from angry nationals, Gladys Berejiklian held her nerve. In the end, it was John Barillaro who had to back down, and he's effectively walked away from today's events empty-handed. On the cusp of calamity, the Premier didn't seem concerned. John Barillaro showed up for the showdown and came off second best, even if he won't admit it. What regrets is there? We, today is a win for the, uh, for the, for the regions. Uh, it's a win for farmers. It's a win for, uh, for those that have been fighting the koala set. The biggest win, though, was the Premier's after she called her deputies bluff. She met his threat to move the Nationals to the crossbench with a promise to sack them from Cabinet. And we wanted to negotiate an outcome that didn't bring down the coalition. And, you know, look, I'm, I'm confident and comfortable. Did we concede? Of course we've conceded some part. Uh, but so has, so has the Liberals. In fact, the Liberals haven't. The koala policy will be discussed at Cabinet, as the Premier's always promised. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. We, we, as the Premier has pointed out um, quite clearly, um, these matters need to be resolved through the Cabinet processes. Uh, that's uh, what um, has been resolved today. What history will remember is that we stood up as one for regional New South Wales. That's what country people want. Are you embarrassed today? Nationals? Absolutely not embarrassed, not at all. Very proud to be a member of the New South Wales Nationals. And the Nationals publicly at least are standing by their leader. I know the team that's with me in the trenches and mate, they'll stick with me. But for how long? There's no doubt John Barillaro has been bruised by this. His back down weakens his bargaining power next time around and compromises his effectiveness as a coalition partner. And there's now a question of whether his Liberal colleagues will work with him at all. What we've seen out of John Barillaro is the greatest act of political bastardry in quite some time. I think that the disloyalty that we've seen out of the Deputy Premier makes his position untenable. The Liberals will continue to attack me, there's no doubt about it. They'll, they'll keep trying to undermine my leadership. Labor will too. This guy, the Deputy Premier, is not a cattle dog, he is a lap dog and he has proven that this morning with his capitulation to the Premier. <laughs> to the brink and back again in less than a day. The koala policy will now be discussed by Cabinet within the next month or so. The Nationals' concerns about the policy remain, so when that meeting takes place, something will have to give. Josh Bavis explains what the fuss is all about. In New South Wales, the iconic animals are officially listed as vulnerable to extinction. On top of that, the bushfires at the start of the year are believed to have wiped out tens of thousands of koalas in just a few weeks. This koala habitat protection policy is designed to bolster and update some of the measures in place to protect these populations. It's directly aimed at one key threat, overdevelopment. That balance between property rights and, and planning law is about balancing the needs of the individual to the needs of society. The two main changes include updated koala habitat protection maps prepared by councils to better identify and protect pockets of land, and new requirements for landowners and developers who want to build large structures on land deemed to be koala habitat. They're getting people coming to their electorate office saying, hey, this is going to have a big impact on my, on my assets, all about protecting koalas, uh, but why are we the only ones paying for it? But the strength in the policy and the sticking points for some politicians are the new measures being used to deem what is a core koala habitat. Firstly, increasing the list of tree species that koalas depend on from 10 to 123, increasing the threshold for developments and protecting areas of land that are suitable for koalas, whether they currently live in the area or not. Either we want what this policy is, so the protection of koala habitat, or throw that out, and we don't want it, and we just want to continue to protect the rights of private 
um, landholders. It's the first major koala policy change in 25 years and will go down as one of the most divisive. Josh Bavis, ABC News, Sydney.